All right. So I was scrolling through Twitter earlier today, and I saw something that genuinely made me mad. Now, if it was just this tweet and just this particular drama on its own, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't be talking about this today. I wouldn't care. I would have just kind of like said, "Oh, people are being dumb about this," and I would have just shrugged it off. The problem is, it's a recurring problem, and it's a recurring problem I've seen around Twitter discussions around gun control. Now, I want to make something very, very clear here. If you're looking for anything approximating a nuanced, smart discussion about anything, you will not go to Twitter. But out of all issues on this fucking planet, you should not go to Twitter to find a nuanced, smart, productive discussion about gun control, all right? Nobody knows what they're talking about, everybody thinks they know what they're talking about, and no one who doesn't know what they're talking about is willing to admit they don't know what they're talking about. Now, I have spoken to and looked at quite a lot of gun statistics, and as far as I can tell, the anti-gun people are right in some areas and wrong in some other areas. And I'm being very broad when I say anti-gun people, because holy fuck, could that be referring to a lot of people, right? Um, what gun control refers to uh, is very, very broad. There's a lot of different measures that could be taken, um, and some countries have gone further than others. Um, there are different uh, restrictions that can be you know, put on gun purchase and ammo purchase, uh, you know, uh, uh, mod purchase and stuff like that to prevent uh, violence, but also, in many people's minds, prevent the population from being armed enough to revolt against the government. Um, there are a lot of people that, especially in my audience, and friends of mine even, that are still, and I'm not 100%, I'm still on, like, the, the edge a little bit on whether or not there is any value whatsoever to the idea that an armed society has any better chance at fighting off a police state, a tyrannical police state, than an unarmed one. Or if said potential tyrannical police state uh, is a big enough of a concern that we ought to risk the problems that guns have had, but then again, overwhelmingly, it seems like cases where, you know, shootings have happened that have had a lot of deaths, the guns were obtained illegally, uh, so it wouldn't have really made a big difference, background checks, the entire process it takes to get a gun. Um, we do actually have pretty substantial, um, you know, like, barriers up right now to getting a firearm. Uh, regardless of what state you're in, even in red states, it's still a bit of a hassle. There's, I, I don't believe, now correct me if I'm wrong, I, I may be wrong here. I don't think there are a lot of states in America where you can just, like, where I, right now, could just go, go get a gun. Like, go get a le legally, like, a legal firearm. Um, there's usually background check, Texas. Maybe. There are, lo I'm not talking about loopholes. There are loopholes. I'm talking about, like, through the traditional means of purchasing a gun from a gun store. I believe Texas. I'd also believe Florida. And I'd also believe, uh, well, actually, no, I know you can't in Florida. Not when I, not last, not when I lived in Florida. I had a friend who was getting a gun from Walmart in Florida and he had to show, he had to like, it got delivered to the Walmart and he had to like show papers and everything. Like he had to go through the process in Florida. Yeah, I don't know. So yeah, you, you have to get um, uh, licensing and like, and permits in, in even some red states, right? So a lot of people that are on the anti-gun side, and this is a very broad range that I'm talking about here, range from very uninformed, just kind of on the wave of like, oh, a school shooting happened. This means guns are too easy to get. The implication is that said guns are legal to get. And so they that kind of assumption just kind of moves through the discussions around, uh, you know, gun ownership here in America. And you even see it repeated by the president. Like, I'm not going to lie, even some of a fair amount of Biden's rhetoric about guns has been kind of bad. I'm not going to lie. If Biden let up on guns, he'd be way more popular. If the Democrats in general let up let up more on guns, they'd be way more popular. I think the like even if we're just talking from a pragmatic position, the uh, left in America's dedication to fighting against gun ownership 
and they're in the demonization of gun ownership too the cultural demonization of responsible of even responsible gun ownership I think is a really, really big problem because it completely disconnects a whole bunch of Americans, of left-wing, like, progressive Americans from a whole lot of other Americans that are not bad people, not in any way worth, like, disregarding, but they're not gonna, like, stand for people that are, in their minds, trying to take away their rights. Because in their mind, you are. Um, now, <clears throat> the anti-gun side has uh, a few good points, one of them being, or quite a few good points. Um, that's why it's such a complicated issue, and there isn't a one-issue-fixes-it-all solution to all of this. In fact, there isn't even a huge array of, of solutions-fixes-all issue, because there will always be some amount of slippage through the cracks, no matter what solutions we employ. Um, and that, that slippage will always be used as justification, potentially, for further tightening of... Of, of the rope. That's also a concern I've heard from people that are more on the pro-gun side that I'm also pretty concerned about. Um, <clears throat> President Xander Hall would immediately fix it. Fuck no! This is so far from an issue that I would know how to fix. Oh my god. There are some issues that I feel like if I sat down with Biden, I could be like, listen, man, let's do this, this, and this. Come on. Like, hear me out. Come on. Come on. Like, like well, have you considered this? Like, there's some issues, like one or two things that I think I know enough about that I think I could convince Biden. Maybe that's how, but like this, I don't know. Um, one of the very compelling, very, very, very compelling, um, uh, statistics is that the vast majority of gun deaths here in America are from suicides and accidental gun discharges. Big argument made by people that aren't in favor of gun ownership is that when you own a gun, you're basically giving people a button that lets them end their lives instantly. And you're you're taking away a lot of the barriers to committing suicide that might otherwise, you know, stop somebody or slow them down and cause them to think about what they're doing and potentially get therapy and whatnot. I've heard people argue so. What, what right do you have to deny somebody quick, easy, and arguably safe access uh, to terminate their own lives? And it's like, let me think about that for a minute. I had to, I had to think about it for a minute. Like, what, what right does the state have to deny individual people the right to have something that will allow them to end their own lives? Why should the state have the, that right? Like, no, 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 fundamentally. Th th those of you, don't, stop thinking with, like, oh, because the law brain right now. Think with a more philosophical mindset. Why, fundamentally, should the state be able to force you to not kill yourself? I was like, well, I think just from, like, a increasing happiness in the world perspective, we should try to prevent people from... from ending their own lives prematurely i think that's something that's good for taxes true true yeah what about taxes the, the you know debt people killing themselves means one, one less taxpayer um now anyway there's a lot of compelling arguments against guns there's a lot of compelling arguments uh, in favor of guns their ownership types of guns um restrictions on their ammunition restrictions on magazine capacity restrictions on types of uh firing rates restrictions on uh just so many goddamn things i could go into um res restrictions on on things that reduce mu muzzle flash because muzzle flash makes it uh harder to shoot and so like that like there's just so many different things that go into uh uh you know firearms and different types of firearms and how they can be modified and how they can be made more deadly less deadly um deadly in different ways that it's really hard to if you want to actually restrict the access to it to do so accurately not to mention we keep on hearing the term assault weapon it, it that's not even like a i i keep on hearing like uh uh democrats use that term and I've heard Republicans call it out as, like, poor, like, poor wording. There are a lot of cases, what the fuck is an assault weapon? Xan assault weapon isn't a real term? Exactly. Which is why when, when I see Democrats use that term, it's what are used politically. I know. That's the issue. It looks stupid. 
when Democrats use the term assault weapon, it, it just kind of looks dumb to people that know about guns. It only really works in your messaging to people that are already afraid of guns, like city living liberal already voting blue no matter who Democrats anyway. When the average rural been anywhere in the, around a gun in their life, potential Republican or potential Democrat hears, we need to ban assault weapons, or, or we need to ban assault weapons or whatever from a Democrat politician, they're like, the fuck that city boy even thinking of, does he mean assault rifle? The fuck's an assault weapon? He don't know what he's talking about. I don't want these people telling me what guns I can't, can and can't own. They don't even know what the hell they're talking about. And, oh, the images were, like, d Democrat, like, oh, there was, like, the, um... Uh, I I'm not gonna go super far into it. I'm sorry, we're dunking too much on Democrats today. Uh, anyway, this is a, a spanking the lefties uh, segment, I will say. Anyway, this particular uh, tweet went viral, and it's only following a tweet that went viral a while back. Who remembers the uh, 30 to 50 wild hogs tweet? 30 to 50 feral hogs refers to a hypothetical argument made on Twitter defending the ownership of assault rifles, which poses, which poise, posited, oh God, I'm so, so bad at reading, which posited that such weaponry would be necessary to combat the 30 to 50 feral hogs that run into my yard within three to five minutes while my small kids play. After the tweet was posted in early August 2019, it was widely mocked in the platform, spawning parody lyrics, image macros, and photoshops. So the, um... The, the question here was, legit question for rural Americans, how do I kill the 30 to 50 feral hogs that run into my yard within three to five minutes while my small kids play? Here, I'll open up the tweet in, a, in another tab so you guys can just, because you've definitely seen this tweet. And honestly, you probably made fun of it. Come on. Y you probably made, made fun of this tweet, right? Hypers, if you made fun of this tweet. It sounds like a like a funny meme, right? How do I kill the 30 to 50 feral hogs? 30 to 50 feral hogs that run into my yard within three to five minutes. Ah, oh, while my small kids play. Oh, what, what a joke, right? That could never happen, right? Hot for one, hogs don't. There's no, there's probably not even that many hogs on the planet. Am I right, guys? Am I right, my fellow city living liberals? There's probably not even that many wild hogs all in one place like that on the planet am i right and, and a wild hog they're like a cute little pig aren't we all we're all city liberal vegans pigs don't hurt anybody they're cute and smart and they they're gentle they love humans they're like dogs but even smarter but like wild hogs aren't aren't any threat right guys well uh no they are uh, though, unfortunately, uh, the person that I was parroting there in that little bit I was doing uh, does not think so, because this tweet went viral and has had some of the most obnoxious responses I've ever seen a couple days ago. Uh, and it was only because I remembered that old 30 to 50 feral hogs tweet that I wanted to talk about this tweet. So let's watch. Italian hunter almost getting mauled by a boar because they're only allowed to hold three rounds in their guns. Uh, this is safe for work. There is no gore or blood, but let's watch. So that was a French boar, okay? That was a pussy-ass European French boar. I grew up in Florida, okay? Th that's right. This is what it's all come down to. This segment was not at all about gun control. This segment was about exposing lefties to the reality of the danger of wild boars. Stop making fun of the fear that people who live in the American South and in rural areas have of wild boars. They are a problem. They're invasive. They breed like crazy and they hoard up in massive numbers. They hoard up in massive, massive numbers. That was one boar. She didn't miss. 
She missed a couple shots, to be fair. I think she hit one or two of those shots. Hogs will eat your dogs and children? Yes, they will. A lot of pets die because of wild boars. Um, and they're a big danger to children. Um, and, like, people that are smaller. I mean, honestly, if there's enough of them, they're a danger to, like, a full-grown big adult man. Um, Cody Johnson's got a whole series on this. Thank God. I really need to watch it because I saw someone say Cody Johnson was right. And I really like some more news's videos. I hope some more news likes me. I hope he hasn't ever said anything bad about me or I hope he doesn't hate me or something. I like his content. The Marvel videos that he does are fucking hilarious. I'm, I'm used to like, oh, I like a lefty YouTuber who's really big. They probably don't like me though if they do know of me. <laughs> um... Yeah, anyway, uh, wild boars are actually, like, a serious threat, and anyone who's lived in the South should know. That was not a particularly large wild boar. Um, he follows Vosh. Okay, that's a good sign of things. Um, that was not a particularly large wild boar. I have seen bigger ones in real life. So, I lived, uh, for a large part of my life on the coast in central Florida. And when I would drive a little bit, when I would drive, when I'd ride in the car with my parents inland, we would drive through this, like, coastal swamp area, which was known for having black bears and wild boars, invasive wild boars. And there were one, one or two times that I would see black bears, but almost every time I saw a giant wild boar, in the like in the evening or in the dark of the night and it was hard to see like the, the detail of it i would always point at it and say bear oh wait no it's a boar and they would literally uproot trees like we like we would drive th down that road and see which tr new trees they've uprooted or just clawed apart with their uh like by with their tusks and and whatnot like just root they'll literally knock down trees that are like 20 feet tall by rooting them, like, uprooting them. Like, hordes of them will do it in the middle of the night. You'll just see their tracks in the mud. Like, just scores of them in the fucking mud. They travel in massive groups. Um, anyway, they, they are a genuine threat. And in fact, in Texas, uh, which, granted, uh, of all the states that would have uh, loose gun restrictions, it's probably one of the ones where it's the most justified. Out in Texas, the, uh, the feral hog... Uh, epidemic is is really really a big problem they're very invasive there they are not the natural predator of pretty much anything out there so there's not really anything that can take them down other than humans and of course they're destroying the natural e ecosystem so you can pay like a hundred and fifty dollars to get in a, a goddamn helicopter in the middle of the night with night vision with a night vision scope and ride around in a helicopter and mow down hordes of boars in the middle of fields in the middle of the night and you are doing a public service you're doing a public service by doing it as well because they are destroying the other natural animals environments by being there um it's very much like the presence of the lionfish in like the florida keys and whatnot and in the Mediterranean Sea, lionfish are, are like an invasive population that are destroying the Florida uh, coral reefs, like the coral reefs off of the Keys and in the Caribbean. And they are destroying the reefs and the oceans and the environments in uh, the Mediterranean. So much so that, that people are being paid to go out and kill them. In most places, including America, you have to get a permit to fish, like a saltwater or freshwater fishing license. Not for lionfish. They will pay you a bounty to bring them in without any licensing, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, and bacon, I guess. Though I would, I mean, I, I guess it's fine to, ki as long as you properly handle the meat uh, you could, and, and it's clean and all that, you can probably uh, eat it. Yeah, the, there, there's not really, meat probably would be gamey. Nah, feral hogs are literally, like, just literally exactly the same as farm pigs. They're just feral, which means they're not domesticated, like, for in being indoors and being, like, taken care of by humans. They have, they're wild. Um, but, like, you could literally shoot one and, and make bacon, and, and it would taste just like any old bacon you'd get, right? They're also disease-ridden, so you need to cook them right. Yeah, that's what I mean. You have to handle the meat right. We're not talking about, like, farm-raised, very controlled environment animals here. We're talking about animals that lived out in the wild, were exposed to God knows what, probably engaged in cannibalism. Cannibalism is not 
necessarily super uncommon among wild pigs or even pigs in captivity, but usually people don't allow their captive pigs to engage in cannibalism. That's the thing. Pigs le will eat literally anything. So yeah. Anyway, uh, wild pigs, wild hogs, uh, really cringe, and uh, you just don't don't understate their lethality, okay? Don't make fun of conservatives on Twitter uh, when they say, I, I want to have a gun to protect like my home from hordes of pigs. Like, Unironically, if you're living in the rural south, that's actually a somewhat valid concern. Not to mention, the reasons for why one would own, say, an assault rifle in the first place, uh, I don't really think the reason for why they own the assault rifle, unless it's to commit a crime or to hurt people, uh, you know, unlawfully or unjustified, ju unjustified, un uh, you know what I mean, unwarrantedly. Uh, like, uh, that has no bearing, I think, on the discussion around, or on, like, a nuanced and, and like, productive discussion around gun ownership. Uh, like, it's fine if you literally want to just own a gun because they look pretty. Because you're owning a gun for hunting, owning a gun for home protection, owning a gun just because you think it looks pretty, I don't care. You should be own able to own a gun either way. Uh, like, we sh I I do agree that we should try to limit the access that people who are at high risk, usually like criminals, people who already have a criminal record. I, I'm not sure how I feel about red flag laws. For those of you guys that don't know, <clears throat> here actually I'll go ahead and I'll read a more <clears throat> succinct definition. I'm a little iffy on red, red flag laws. In the United States, a red flag law is a gun control law that permits police to to petition a state court to order the temporary removal of firearms from a person who they believe may present a danger to others or to themselves. So, red flag laws have been used in the past, I'm sure, for very, um, like, valid reasons, but at the same time, like, there, I feel like there's some places those could be taken that could be really... Yeah, it, it's fundamentally a violation of the Fourth Amendment. Yeah, it's unconstitutional, for starters. Though I don't think constitutionality is the end-all be-all of morality in American lawmaking, and it should never be. But, um, for one, it's unconstitutional. That alone will win over a bunch of people on why it's it's bad. But, like, it, I, it, it, I know the slippery, slip, slippery slope fallacy is a thing, but, like, god damn. You're really opening up the state to a lot of ambiguity to as to when and who they're allowed to take guns from and why. Not to mention, there's also the discussion we have to have about the fact that when gun controls or act, gun control laws are applied, historically, they've been applied most strongly and most disproportionately on POC communities. Um, like, go all the way back to, like, when they instituted the Black Codes, and it was, like, normal for everybody to walk around with a wheel gun on their hip because it was the Wild West or whatever, it was illegal to carry a gun and be black if the racist townsfolk felt like it back then. That was a form of gun... That was one of the earliest forms of gun control ever implemented in the United States, was when the Black Codes specifically instituted, uh, uh, in like, exceptions for gun ownership for black people to say, oh yeah, it's illegal for black people to have guns. Yep, Reagan specifically uh, cracked down on the Black Panthers and their legal um, uh, showing off of their legally owned firearms. Mostly legally owned them. I can't speak for all of them. <laughs> like, they weren't shooting anybody. Not anybody who didn't, like, pose an active violent threat. Yeah, they formed an armed picket line. The older I get, the more I think that armed picket lines are, are like, based. Because I used to think they were bad optics. Like, I don't think the left should adopt the idea of armed picket lines. But recently I've been seeing more videos of um, protests and of especially, not even protest, more like pride events and like drag events that literally have neo-Nazi counter pro like protests happening like around the block and um, like lefty, like anti-fascist protesters and activists will like show up armed to the fucking teeth and form a blockade between the neo-Nazi protesters and, like, the drag event or whatever, and, be and you know, keep the neo-Nazis from, like, running up on this drag event and attacking everybody. That's not a protest. There's no police at the drag event. 
Like, if those Nazis wanted to push through and, like, attack them, they very well could. And so I'm starting to think that, like, having an armed line of defense uh, of, of legal, uh, responsible gun, you know, holding uh, at, a, at lefty protests is good. I'm becoming a little bit more, uh, a little bit less antagonistic to it, you know, optically. Regardless, though, uh, the, 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 the moral of the story is do not fuck with wild hogs. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. It really helps the channel out a lot. Whether you're watching it live right now as we speak and you want to leave a like on the segment, on the stream, as you're watching now, it really does help. Or on the VOD if you're watching after the fact. Or on the video if you're watching way after the fact. It really does help out a lot. A like is not just a hollow show of support on YouTube. It really has been buffed to the point of, you know, likes really do substantially help the channel. So please drop a like. And of course, if you want to see more from me and you want to get notified whenever you, you know, I upload a new video or I go live or anything like that here on YouTube, you can subscribe and ring the bell icon and turn on all notifications so that YouTube actually does these things because they won't otherwise. YouTube will just like suggest, like subscribing is like a suggestion to YouTube that they might maybe want to let you know whenever I go live or upload a new video. Ring the bell icon and turning all notifications is actually what subscribing on YouTube used to be. Anyway. You can also follow my social media, link down below if you like, especially my Twitter, that's where I think all the spiciest memes happen. But my fan Discord is probably where all of the uh, most fun community-driven stuff happens. I'm probably going to be doing a big watch party of the Lord of the Rings Amazon Rings of Power show in my Discord when episode 3 drops. We'll watch episodes 1, 2, which I've already seen already, and then the third one when it drops, which I haven't seen yet and uh, do some theory crafting, speculating, talking about it, reviewing when it drops. So definitely join my Discord if you want to be a part of that, um, or other watch parties and cool stuff, gaming-related stuff that I do in there. And of course, if you want to support me financially directly, you can do so by donating, subscribing, or gifting a sub on my website, which is always extremely appreciated. Of course, never do it if you can't afford to, though this is my full-time job. And I always appreciate the support of my lovely, lovely audience, as it is what keeps me going. And uh, yeah, if you want to support me anywhere else, you can do it on YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, Stream Elements, and Patreon as well. It should be pretty obvious how. With all that said, regardless of how you support me, I really appreciate it. And uh, if you watched all of this, comment down below. Don't screw with hogs. If you watched all the way to the end, I want you to comment down below, don't screw with hogs, to let me know that you watched all of it. I want to see how many of you did. Anyway, thank you and have a good one.